Digital assets are, some say, part of the future, but they are complicated, also very confusing. Here to explain a little bit more about this space and what we can anticipate uh, in the years ahead are uh, two attorneys from Reed Smith. So we've got uh, Jeff Silberman and also Herb Kozlov. Thank you very much for kind of breaking this down for us. Um, first, let's just start with what is a digital asset? Herb, do you want to take Sure. Um, it's not that complicated and it's not that fancy. Basically, a digital asset is the representation of your ownership of some form of property in zeros and ones. So, Jeff, I mean, will we, will everything we own be digitized? Would you say 5, 10, 15, ever? I mean, do you think that's the way things are going? I, I think that's certainly the um, directionally the trend that we're seeing both in the financial markets and otherwise. Uh, I think even if you walk around where we're located today, you'd be hard pressed to walk down any street in New York and not see people living their lives day to day via their phone, via tablets. Um, the financial markets and the securities that are created, sold and traded within the financial markets are frankly no different. Where does the SEC stand on all of this? Uh, the SEC has been vocal and aggressive. In November, the SEC issued a report and no surprise, they basically said, and remember S in SEC stands for securities. Yeah. The SEC has been aggressive in letting the world know that these assets, these digital assets, are also securities. So will this be seamless for the investor then? Um, if I own IBM shares, for example, well, besides the fact that I don't have paper anymore, will I notice any difference, legally or otherwise? Jeff? Yeah, I think the real answer there is the answer should, <laughs> truthfully, <laughs> no. Okay. On the investor side, it shouldn't be. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to have the same access points to the financial markets that you previously had. Uh, there are new exchanges, uh, new platforms popping up as infrastructure to help issuers bring their digital securities to market. But at the end of the day, it's another flavor of the type of security that investors already know and own. About the issuers, how do they need to prepare for kind of this new future? Great question. And, and when you asked the question a moment ago about IBM, will it change the way I buy or own my IBM shares? I think the more immediate change will be not when you're buying a giant capitalized company that's traditionally traded in traditional ways, but new issuances. Mm -hmm. When a private company wants to bring in what would be considered private capital from multiple sources, that's you know steps before doing a full-blown initial public offering, but that's where the digitization of securities becomes easier, quicker, okay. more efficient, okay. and then creates secondary trading markets that right now might not be available to you. Interesting. And really, the blockchain technology is what is making all this possible. So explain to me what that means for an investor. There'll be, there's more transparency. I know there's some middle men, people, that are being cut out of the process as well. I mean, what, can they, what will they see in terms of change because of the blockchain? Do you want to take this question? Sure. Um, I, I think that before we even talk about what change they're going to see, there's a sorting out happening. And what they will see, there are SEC enforcement actions every day now um, directed at the people who are on the outside edges of what's appropriate. But for investors who are coming into the space through properly regulated uh, and controlled platforms, what they're seeing is greater access to more transactions, more transparency, and again, that disintermediation, getting middle people out of the way more direct connection between the issuer of the securities, the buyer of securities, and a little more transparency in terms of pricing, volumes, things like that. Mm -hmm. Now, I know there's a pharmaceutical, I'm sorry, Jeff, go ahead. No, it's okay. Okay, so I know there's a pharmaceutical company, I can see this happening a lot too, um, where they will tokenize or spin off as a digital asset, say a new drug or something. Um, and do you see more of that happening? That gives people a way to benefit from, say, a fast growth area of a business um, by investing in tokens or something. Do you think that's going to be something investors will have an option to do? I, I think there, there are certain investors that have appetite for tokenized assets. I do still think, you know, to use the, the baseball game analogy, we are in the first and second inning, and so uh, to me that really means there's, there's two components to the market fully evolving where those markets that you're, that you're talking about are more robust. One, it's 
you know, are there enough technology platforms that have really built out end-to-end -end solutions that can really robustly support those markets as opposed to just a one-off trade. But in addition to that, I think while there are certainly no shortage of um, investors, institutional and frankly retail as well that are looking at purchasing tokenized assets, I do think that there's a lot of people that are still taking a little bit of a wait and see mm -hmm. uh, attitude in terms of you know just letting some of these markets um, develop yeah. a little bit further and mature a little bit further before they go completely all in. So thank you very much, Jeff and Herb, for joining us and helping to kind of explain this new space. Thank Appreciate you, Jane. Yes. Absolutely, thanks for having and us. And thank you as well for joining us. We'll be right back.